Hey everyone, how's it going? Eamon here, just getting ready for hey my everyone, English live stream. Eamon here, just getting ready for hey my everyone, English live stream. Going? All right, cool. Sorry for that double audio. Just needed to check that the mic was working. Speakers are working. Music's a bit loud. Let me lower it down. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and sign up on the chat. Aim in here. Um, let's also double check that this is working on Twitch. Okay, looks like the titling is wrong. It says Environments with Character, Stephen Anderson, but that is not it. Um, my name is Eamon Akhtar. And today, we'll be streaming some uh, ZBrush sculpting. So, a little bit about me. I'm a 3D artist in LA. Been here for, I don't know, about five years. And been doing a lot of sculpting and ZBrush in that time for 3D print for various types of projects. Uh, VR to 3D print, stop motion animation, large scale sculpture, uh, prototyping toy lines and, uh, you know, toy work. Uh, costume stuff. So you want to learn more about my work you can go to aimin3d.com and there's a whole 3D print and sculpture section in there and you can see all sorts of stuff that I've been working on. Uh, the latest project is uh, my wife and I, Fa and I, have been working on our own IP, Fungosaurus, the dinosaur mushroom hybrids. And we did a Kickstarter and launched our own uh, mystery box toy line. You see these characters here? And those are online at fungosaurus.com and we can learn more about these creatures. These are all sculpted in ZBrush. We printed and prototyped them out on a Form 2, got them painted, and then we take them everywhere we travel. So we get a little photos of them everywhere. And that's kind of what we're building our world upon, is, is the simple idea of dinosaur mushroom creatures that spored wherever they land in the world, they start popping up and walking around. You can follow on Instagram, Fungusaurs on Insta. We tend to post all the latest stuff there, like for example, today's post is that I'll be doing the zebra stream. And we'll be making a new character, a human character for a Fungusaur short film. So just doing some IP development in today's stream. Lastly, if you want to see any more uh, work uh, of the various streamers, you can go to pixelogic.com ZBrush Live Presenters. And there's an awesome list of streamers here. Shane Olson is amazing, Ashley Adams, Michael Pavlovich, Tomas Wittelbach. All of these people have really inspired me. And you can come down here to Eamon Akhtar and see my past broadcasts and schedules. So you'll notice I generally do Thursdays, 10 to 12, at least right now. And the past couple of streams, I've been also experimenting with this character, just some ideation. Uh, but a lot of my stream now has shifted towards 3D printing for IP creation. Uh, what is the point of that 3D printing? You got to use it as a tool to get your ideas into reality. So that's what my streaming is all about, 3D printing ideas to reality. I usually start with a little bit of show and tell and then jump right into ZBrush. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so disregard that the Twitch says it's not working. It is what it is. Oh man, I had uh, the freaking window up the whole time. I was talking. Shrink that down. All right, so if I do anything dumb like that, let me know in the chat. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. All right, here we go. So let me do that really quickly again. Um, Twitch is working. I'm on the chat, so feel free to type any questions in. This is Amen3D.com. You can see more of my work there. And 3D print sculpture has all sorts of stuff that you can see that I've been working on. Latest project is Fungusaurs. More about that on fungusaurs.com. And there's a whole section in here called Dev Diary, where we're talking about prototyping the toy line from scratch, uh, working with factories to make it a reality, doing a Kickstarter, making an augmented reality app. 
So yeah, all that's there on Fungusaurus.com and you can follow on Fungusaurus on Instagram. And lastly, this was Pixelogic.com ZBrush Live author Eamon Uchter. And you can see all of my previous streams over here. All right, one more lastly, lastly. If you go to mold3dacademy.com, got a second to load. Hopefully it loads. There it is. All right, so their spring term has begun, and I had the privilege to teach one of the classes, 3D printing for ZBrush artists. So if you go under self-paced, 3D printing for ZBrush artists, you can get eight weeks of lesson, pretty much everything I know about 3D printing at a solid price right now. Um, you learn 3D printing for fashion wearables, <clears throat> jewelry, miniatures, large scale, articulation, um, cutting, slicing, keying, hollowing, all of that stuff. So I'll drop that link in the chat. Uh, Craig Kelly saying we still can't see you. That's all right. I am here. Uh, I'm just going to show you some show and tell stuff on the printer and then I'll flip my webcam back around. All right, cool. All right, so that was the Mold 3D class, and let's get started a bit. Who's excited for Avengers? I know I am. I'm going tonight. All right, so uh, one more announcement, and then we'll get the show and tell started, and then the stream started. Uh, if you're interested in getting a Form 3 3D printer, uh, you can get $500 off by using this referral code, Form3S3RV8R. Uh, this code does not work online. You're going to have to call Formlabs customer service, but it is the best desktop printer for high resolution 3D printing right now. Um, there are really good SLA printers that are, you know, almost half the price on Kickstarter, but Formlabs has the customer service and they're not paying me to say this. I, I really like their printers. So I'm going to show you some stuff on a form two, and then I'm going to hopefully get a form three soon. Uh, and if you want one, you can pick it up using this code. All right. So what are we talking about today? Um, I'm going to get back to Fungusaurus because that's my IP and that's what I want to develop. But first, I'm going to do a little show and tell. So let's get that started. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Eamon. So this is my Form 2 printer. And you'll notice it threw an error, dispense error. So I was trying to print something last night, and it failed because my cartridge ran out of resin in the back. Now, this was my fault. That had nothing to do with the printer. But I wanted to show you what to do if a print fails. So this cartridge is empty. So I can just pull that out, close the tip here, and put this away because this is gone. This is empty. Next thing I'm going to do is pop open the printer and slide out these prints that I were trying to do. Now you'll notice the prints themselves did not fail. Those are doing just fine. This is printing in clear resin. And so one of the many different types of resins you can print on Formlabs. And you can see I'm using the entire build space. Now this print would actually go to be about this tall. So this is all trash now. It's useless. Uh, none of these prints are actually finished, though they look like they're going well. So I should just be able to restart the print once I'm done cleaning this tray out. I'll need to put in a new clear cartridge. So I'll grab that up here from the top. New clear cartridge. You can say, see it says clear V4. I'll pop the lid. Make sure this area is clear. And I'll slide it in the back here. Printer should say cartridge inserted. It's doing its sensing resin thing, but there's no build tray in there, so it'll notice that pretty quickly. But what I want to do is clear out this build tray. All of this stuff has to come off for this print to get started again. So I've got my trash can right here. And I've got this handy dandy tool to abort print. So this does actually abort. So I've got this handy dandy tool that I can use to lever off or lever off these prints. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to get under there and lever some of these off. You can see them kind of pop off. Kind of hard with this angle. But 
Well, there you go. There's the majority of the prints came right off. So I'm going to toss these. And just pop off these last ones. There we go. All right. So, build tray is clean. <clears throat> I'm going to get some paper towel and wipe it. I'm also going to dip that paper towel in some isopropyl alcohol. This is 90% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. You can get this from any grocery store. This is going to clean that really nice and clean. Now you'll notice it's pretty scratched up, but that's okay. The more these get scratched up, the better the prints stick to them. Since it's printing upside down, that's a good thing. All right, that's clear. I'm going to lift this case, pop the lever up at the top, slide this build tray in. I'll do a quick check to make sure there's no debris in the bottom of the resin here. And it's perfect, so good to go. So if I want to start another print, I can just say print now and it'll get started. Now I don't want to be printing during the stream because you'll be hearing this printing noise pretty consistently. And I'm going to be talking over it. So I'll start this print in a couple of hours. Just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to work with a desktop 3D printer. Now this isn't the only one that I have, but this is the highest resolution one. Spin this camera around and you can notice this is the rest of my room. There's the big paradox character, one of my fungusaurus creatures. And I'm going to show you this other printer, which is a Raise 3D N2 Plus. Now they have a Pro 2 Plus, which is the newest model. But the N2 Plus is an FDM printer that's 12 inches by 12 inches by 24 inches in height. And so these are my two printers that I use for SLA high resolution printing and then FDM for prototyping and large scale printing. So yeah, that's it for my printing setup. Uh, happy to answer any more questions in the chat, but I'm gonna switch gears from printing to IP stuff and get started on that now. Hope that didn't give anyone whiplash. All right, cool. Make sure this is nice and settled. Webcam is good. And you can get this started now. Shrink that screen down. Yeah, that's about good enough. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is more of my IP building, the Fungusaurs world, uh, these dinosaur mushroom hybrids. I want to build an animated series and world around these characters. So how do you go about that? You have to come up with a story. So I'm generally inspired by Disney and like the look of Disney and uh, they've kind of set the standard for what animation should be. They've got a diverse cast of characters, but not nearly diverse enough. Like they don't have any characters that I would deem to be weird or eccentric or really, you know, not of the norm. Uh, they have underdogs to be sure. But what I'd like to do is to create a world with fungusaurs with all sorts of weirdos, all sorts of characters that I've never seen represented in animation from all parts of the world. Like most of these girls are white chicks. And you've got Jasmine and Pocahontas is basically the standouts, Mulan. And so what I want to show is all sorts of characters and maybe even a different look and style. So first thing I did this weekend, hope you guys had a good 420 weekend. <laughs> so this is my little sketchbook with the Samurai Jack on it. And not sketchbook, this is my notebook. And this weekend, I started writing a short story. And I wrote out one, two, three, four acts of it. And then I rewrote it, act one, act two, act three, act four, but it kind of is a shot list. So this breaks it down by every shot that's going to be in the film. So like that's a shot, that's a shot, that's a shot. And so I've got now 80 shots with up to six characters in 10 environments for a short film. Now this is the start. This is kind of how you ID it. I'll probably narrow this down to two or three characters, four or five environments, but that's how I started the process of IP, is just writing. Then I started doing some character design. 
So here's the sketchbook where I started designing this character. And I'll talk about how I got to this look very shortly. And here's kind of a idea for the story I want to have. It. So the main crux of the story is that this girl is a climber. She's going to make a connection with this like little paradox creature. And she's going to go and try to save it when it gets picked up by like a hawk or eagle. So it's kind of like the action climax point of the story. But what we're going to do is start by developing this character. All right, shrink this down. And let's talk a little bit more about the look of characters. Now, Disney, like I said, has set the standard. They've got very appealing uh, female look figured out. Uh, nailed down pretty exactly and this is what high-end animation is today um, but high-end animation can be expensive and so for an indie developer indie maker like myself trying to get everything to look this good uh, requires team a team of a hundred people or more uh, my friend Tyler uh, actually did a lot of the shading for these characters and so I can know I know how much work goes into this um, and if you do try to emulate Disney, there's a whole gang of people that are like, well, you know, giving you feedback of how they think it should be. And so sometimes it's best if you want to focus on the story and creating an appealing animation uh, to not focus so hard on the style uh, and trying to match something that exists. You can create something original and new. So this is my first pass at these Fungusaurus character designs back in 2017 with concept artist Ryan Winch. Ryan's an excellent illustrator and has his own uh, IP that he's been building called Space Pilgrim. Um, and if you look in one of my previous streams, actually a bunch of them, I was sculpting a character of his um, from 2D to 3D. Now these are the Fungusaurus characters I imagined in 2017 for a TV show. Um, Kay being the protagonist, uh, her grandfather Dr. Nori being the creator of the Fungusaurus, and then the rest of the characters being explorers, uh, adventures that go and track down these fungusaurs uh, when they get out into the world. So this was the basic idea and I love Ryan's uh, illustration and style which is why I started developing this character first, Nish, the one I can relate most to a brown girl from South Asia um, somewhere. I haven't really specified. So I started with a younger version of Nish because I wanted to do some sort of short um, and a short film doesn't require it to look like the TV series, it can be a precursor. So this is the first pass I did. You can see I gave her heterochromia and she's got that Red Riding Hood look to start off with. And I, then I did a bunch of variations. So this was in my last Zebra stream, I believe, last week's stream. It's just trying different variations on the character. I like how the headband gives her kind of a mushroom haircut. Um, you know, reinforces the fungus theme. Um, and the way the thing I feel is that it's a bit too referential. So this one up at the top right, it looks Red Riding Hoodish. This one and the left looks a bit like Hilda. The one on the bottom looks a bit like Dora, the Explorer. Uh, the one on the right seems the most original, as far as I haven't seen many South Asian girl characters uh, rocking that scarf or dupatta, as they call it. So let's see, let me lower the music a little bit. Lower that to like one percent. So this seemed like the most original way to proceed, uh, but I did some more variations. So I changed up the colors to see what that would look like. Change up the footwear, and so it went from this original first pass to something like this. And that's what character design and development is. It's doing passes until you feel like it's right. Did another color alteration where I tried more uh, pastel colors. Uh, pastel colors tend to look better on darker skin. You just it brings out uh, the character's face more. But now what I want to do is explore a very different direction for the character style-wise. So instead of going the Disney route, I want to try doing more of a Nickelodeon or like a simplified uh, simplified TV animation route. So that's what I'll be exploring today. Now how I got to this specific look is by browsing ArtStation and coming across an artist that I have to give a shout out to, Alex Lust. He's, I believe, a Swedish artist and working at King. And this is a artwork that he did based off of the concept art of Jake Morrison Art. So Jake Morrison Art is a 2D concept artist and 
by the looks of it, just fantastic art. He's got so much great character and just sense of uh, what's happening right now for TV, I feel. All of his characters have these simplified rounded heads, big bulging eyes, and really cute and easy, you know, simple proportions to understand and explain. There you go. You can see a cross section of his characters. So I messaged Jake to see if he's available for some freelance to do some uh, concept art work for me. And uh, hopefully that will be a good collaboration. But just based on seeing this work by Alex Lust, I thought, well, I can give that a shot and develop my own character and try to give it this kind of look and see if it works better. So credit where credit's due. What we're going to do is try to create our character in this style. So it's kind of like that trend that's been going around these days, draw this in your style. I'm going to try to 3D this or sculpt this in my style. But this is the character we're going to be working on. Uh, Nish, just uh, South Asian brown girl, climber, climber girl, uh, a little bit anxious, but you know, fearless when she needs to be. And that's what we're going to be developing. So I'll have this stuff pulled off to the side, kind of like a reference. And I'll also open the Restream chat. See, is that here? No, it's not. Here it is. Restream chat. So that'll be open alongside this view. And then if you have any questions, just, sh you know, holler. All right. So I'm going to look through the Restream chat really quickly to see if you guys had any questions while I start it. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Quay Tabi saying Avengers, I hear that may be a movie. <laughs> you know what, my desktop has been uh, John Wick for a little while, just because I'm super excited about that coming out. But since I'm going to go see Avengers tonight, the first thing I'm going to do is set that as my desktop background. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get excited. All right. Restream chat, let's see if we have any more questions. Pizza Kent Sharon says, I think I saw Fungusaurs of Monster Palooza. You probably did. We were there. Uh, Monster Palooza was an expo here in Pasadena, and we had a great time. To give you guys an idea, we have this big display piece, and then all of our little mystery box toys and characters. You can get these online at fungusaurs.com. And we do go to shows like Monster Palooza, uh, Designer Con. This year we're excited to be at uh, the CTN Animation Arts Festival, the downtown Burbank one, in uh, May, in a month. And then we're going to also be at uh, Lightbox Animation Expo in September, where we plan to reveal more of our animation plans. All right, perfect. Renee Andrulius saying, God bless you, congrats, thank you. Uh, Simarin King saying, I'm a weirdo. Will I be represented? Simarian, send me an image of you. That's possible. I can represent you. Um, thank you for showing the form, too. Appreciate the background of what I'm doing. Cool. No, happy to share. All right. Craig Kelly saying, nice drawing. Doing the same type of thing, learning to draw with the help of ZBrush. Yeah, I'm a sculptor, so my drawings generally suck, but it's great to uh, explore and get there. Our monochrome moose is saying just bought ZBrush 2019. What would you use to animate the model? So animation, I'll likely use Maya or Moto or some animation heavy program. ZBrush is what I use to sculpt. So let's do that right now. Let's start getting into sculpting. Uh, Mikhail Wellington is asking, there is another CTN Expo before November. Yes, there is. So I can briefly mention that. So the downtown Burbank uh, Arts Festival in 2019 is partnered with CTN Road Trip so you can see all of your favorite animators from Disney they come out and set up like 400 shops there's get people from DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network um, all sorts of people in the animation industry are going to be out here um, and it'll be called the Downtown Burbank Arts Festival I think it's May 18th through 19th so you can learn more about that online just type in Downtown Burbank Arts Festival or CTN Road Trip. And that's coming up next month. So yeah, if you come by, you'll see uh, Fungusaurs on display. All right, great. 
All right, hold on one second. It's a bit dark. Pull this up. So you should be able to see me just slightly better. That lighting change. Plug in these headphones. Set up this mic. And let me know if at any point anything becomes too loud or obtrusive. Alright, so this is my ZBrush. I'm going to uh, shrink it down to size. Sorry for the glitching. Just want to make sure you all can see the custom interface that I've got with the custom UI. And well, move the whole thing. And down here you can see I've got a few more little tools, the lighting adjustment and then the depth adjustment. First thing I'm going to do is go to document range, cut that in half, double the size of the uh, document and click AA half. That way everything I make will be clear to see and anti-aliased. I'm going to go to load tool and load up this uh, previous version of Niche that I had. And we'll start from there. So here's the character. Make sure the perspective mode is turned off. There you go. You can take a look at what the character looks like. I like the face of this character and I like just the simplicity of it so far. But I want to make it even more simplified and try out the new style. Let's see here. So what I think we should do is bring in this image into ZBrush so we can have that as a reference point to always look at. I'm going to start by opening it in Photoshop and just cropping in. <coughs> All right, Nightbot saying the stream title has been updated to ZBrush 2019 3D printing and ZBrush ideas to reality with Eamon Uckler episode 38. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so I'm just going to come over to here and do a little crop of my quick shitty drawing and I'm going to fill content aware that way I lose that big pink area and I'll save this as new style concept okay close out of Photoshop and then back in ZBrush I'll go to my texture palette and import it in there's my new style concept. I'll have it selected and I will click on this button right here at the spotlight. Now when you add something to spotlight you have the ability to scale it. So I'll make it relatively small and move it over into the corner. And you can even adjust the uh, intensity of it so you can really uh, crank it and only see the white or the black and so you can make it as uh, visible as you choose. I'm likely going to just change the opacity just slightly once I can find it, there it is. Just to be a bit more subtle and you can press Z to drop it onto the canvas. Now if at any point it's hard to uh, sculpt because the spotlight is on, that's likely because you haven't gone to samples and turn off spotlight projection. When you turn this off, you'll be able to use most of your brushes as you normally would without spotlight getting in the way. And now you're only using this as kind of an image plane. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to save this scene as Nish Younger New Style 1. And let's change this character to look more like this character. Now I've got a couple of different looks for this character. I think I'll start with this version. Hired Gun SG saying is such a great educator. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, so we've got a few different parts in here that we don't need. 
but I'm just going to leave the sub tools in there. Uh, I don't need to delete everything uh, that I've built. Uh, I'm just going to pick and choose what I want on. Can solo mode to start seeing different things. I'm going to start with these shoes, literally starting from the bottom up. I don't need laces if this is going to be climbing shoes. So I'm going to get rid of those laces. And I'm going to go geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Next up, going to see, maybe I should dynamesh because I don't really care about the topology for these just yet. Go to Dynamesh. Let's see what 40 resolution does. All right. So with Project On, it's about a million polys and, I don't know, not too good. There we go. So I'm going to make these super low poly. Switch over to my Clip Curve. Clip the bottom so it's flat. Maybe even clip the sides because we don't really need this. That's kind of more like the shape of climbing shoes. Dynamesh again, maybe at a higher resolution. Now you'll notice Dynamesh has a few different settings. If you just click on it regularly, it'll Dynamesh it one way. If you alt click on it, it'll Dynamesh it using a completely different algorithm. So yeah, be sure to always play with that stuff. There's a lot of things in ZBrush that you can alt click and it'll change how it behaves. Make sure I grab a little bit of this to make sure that this foot has a clear space for toes in there. All right, looking good, looking simple and clean. All right, we need a couple more additions to the shoes. So I'm going to click just this front area. Oskan Goksu on Facebook says, hi, what's up, man? I think you're a man. It's hard to tell from your name. All right, so I'm going to go to, after I've got this area masked, I'm just going to click Extract. And let's see what this is the general extract does. That's a bit big, but let's accept it. Turn off solo mode. And it'll smooth it down a bit. That'll smooth it down to size. And with climbing shoes, you've got a really hard tip on those shoes. So I want to make sure that that's well represented. We've got some feet in there from beforehand. So I want to make sure that they fit in to the shoes. Now this climbing uh, toe stuff is basically right at the end of the toe, so it's not that big. And it's kind of like ballet shoes, it's just a hard end so that you can uh, hold yourself up on like just your toes if you need to. Make sure I flatten the bottom. And just smooth it down a bit. Do the same thing, geometry dynamesh that. A little bit higher resolution. And flatten the bottom again. Not too interested or worried about uh, things perfectly fitting or not. Or looking perfect because this is just still the concept phase. But 
sometimes I get uh, a bit picky. All right, so there's the end for the toes. Going to do the same thing for the back here. Mask lasso and select that heel area. And we're going to maybe select a bit more of it. Yeah, like that. And we'll extract again. Accept again. Drop the mask. And smooth. Make sure it's high enough. Clip it. And inflate. Just pressing I. It can affect the saying, uh, just divide the actual polygon. So zones with a lot of polys will have a lot more, while zones with a few will have a bit. Uh, oh, I see. You're explaining the difference between dynamesh and divide based on Prakash Desai's question. So divide simply adds more geometry. So if you look at polyframe mode here, and if I press Control D or under geometry divide, you'll notice the number account goes up, 35K. to 8,000. So it's hard to tell with polyframe sometimes it doesn't change but you can see how it's getting uh, simpler and simpler. That's what divide does. Dynamesh it basically just changes the resolution, it changes the topology of the mesh. So it's kind of like virtual clay. You can always sculpt some weird thing, dynamesh it and it'll update the topology so it'll work better. That's what dynamesh is really great for. Uh, am I using a mouse? Yes, I am using a mouse uh, for this first part. Uh, I've got my Wacom right here. Um, I can start using that whenever I feel like it. But I usually start with the mouse for blocking, and then I only use the pen for uh, sculpting, actual detail stuff. Um, all right, someone on YouTube is saying, uh, I don't know, a lot of L's or I's. How's the job outlook for 3D modeling these days? Um, really depends, man. <laughs> it really depends on what you're uh, going for. If you're interested in 3D modeling for animation or games or toys or VFX or pharmaceuticals or advertising or commercials or... It's so different. It's different depending on the industry you're in. And all of those industries need 3D modelers. What I like to say is talk about and think about is what if you didn't need a job? What if you created your own job? Uh, and that's the world that's idyllic um, because you could work for places like Disney or DreamWorks or Blizzard or Riot uh, but then you have to cater your content, whatever you make, to their style, their vision. And I've been in LA for a while and I've worked for a lot of these companies. I've done projects for DreamWorks and Disney and Blizzard and um, I just realized that there is no dream job. If you want uh, to do something, you should just do it. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just building my own IP, my own worlds. And then I'll pitch it out there and see if anyone wants to help me make it a reality. And if they don't, I'll make it a reality myself. I use 3D printing to start my own business, to get a bunch of clients and you know I have a lot of repeat clients so I have a bit of independence uh, now having run my own business for oh, three years now so I don't have to uh, be super limited to thinking about uh, just jobs although I'm doing that all the time too I went to DreamWorks not too long ago I've got a uh, potential thing at legacy effects so we'll see if that happens but the thing with jobs is you're always looking. You're always going to be uh, hustling. And if you build your own thing, then people will come to you. All right. So there's the first pass on the shoes. And I probably will keep editing this. But one thing at a time. Let's merge these shoe pieces together. So go to Subtool, Merge Down, Merge Down. Mordekainer saying, Red Wax Hype. <laughs> All right, I can switch off Red Wax. I like Skin Shade 4 better anyway. That way you can actually see the colors you're trying to hit. And I'm probably not going to care too much about colors 
for this first phase um, because it's all about shape and form before you can get to color. But I might throw in some stuff here and there. There we go. <laughs> Mortar Caner is sad about the red wax. I think he likes it. And there's a tip there. You have to disable polyframe view and enable again to see the changes in updated wireframe. All right, thank you for the tip. Let's see if we can do that on this foot here. So there's the polyframe view. And I'll go to divide. And I'll disable and come back to it. And you can see how polyframe has changed. Yeah, thank you for that tip. Okay, so there's the feet and the shoes. Uh, let's now make the pants. And we'll probably change the proportions as we go. Let's see, what resolution are these pants? They're 1.234 million polys. Uh, let me see if I've got a low res version of these pants. I'm going to save this scene. And I'm going to click on this button, Reconstruct Subdivisions. Now, this is pretty common when you are working in ZBrush to divide, 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 delete lower. But if you still have the history, you can reconstruct the subdivision. Let's see if that works. It does not. So I have no history. In that case, I'll just DynaMesh at a really low resolution. And that should give me low resolution pants. And now I can focus on the shape and form again. Aha! Uh, so I had feet in there as part of the pants. So I don't want to do that. I want to make sure my feet are on their own separate layer. Because I spent some time sculpting these feet in the last stream. They're pretty good feet. I might need to use these feet. I'm going to shift click there. Split hidden. That way I can focus on the pants. And just the pants. Click Dynamesh. There we go. I'm going for really simplified shapes here. And I might still have a little hint of calf. Pants come basically right up to the ankles here. And there we go, simple pants. I'm going to divide these pants up now a few times. Delete lower because I don't really need it. Inflate a bit here and there. And remember, we're trying to go for a very simplistic, stylized character, so hopefully this will be even faster. All right, looking good. The Dynamesh, divide a few more times. Every time I make a big change, I like the Dynamesh. This cleans up the topology. All right. Now what I want to do is add the belt and the belay loop. So first thing, I'm going to go to this shirt, do the same thing, make sure the shirt is on its own layer, pull it in a bit, whereas before the shirt was acting as something to go on top of the pants, now I'm going to have it maybe be a hoodie or something that falls into place. Can inflate right above the pants. I don't need this for now either, so I'll turn that off. So 
So I'm switching gears here from the move tool to the inflate tool pretty regularly. I've got them mapped to hotkeys V and I for move and inflate. And that should work. Next thing, I'm going to come over to here with dam standard, make sure this is not cut and looping into the pants. Just butt out a bit evenly. I want to make sure that the pants are going a bit higher than they need to, just in case. So I'll switch to my move tool, transpose, let's move them up. Dynamesh again, divide again, again. There we go. Make sure this butt is filled out. Still a young character, so not too much, but more than the crotch and front, so it's obvious. The front and the back. Cool. Now, let's go in and create the belt. So the belay belt for a belay loop is kind of almost a complete belt, but not quite. I'm going to select all of this area and then click Subtool, Extract, accept that. And you can start sculpting this. You can go to Geometry Dynamesh. Just Dynamesh that pretty regularly. Bring it a bit lower. Now let's change the color of it so it's obvious for us to see what's happening. You can see now I'm switching from my mouse to my uh, tablet because there's more sculpting to be done. And I want this belay belt to go all the way through the body. So I'm going to select the, or my mass select around the edges. I'll kind of just move those in. Not caring about topology, I just really want uh, there to be no gaps between the body and that belt. Dynamesh that, smooth it, inflate it a bit, smooth it. Now we've got a belt that goes all the way in. This is a trick I picked up for 3D printing because with 3D printing you don't want any gaps at any point. What I mean by gaps is you don't want any space here between the pants and the belay loop here. We'll just create a mess. Switching to my H polish tool. Or H polish brush. I'm just going to flatten the top of this belt a bit. We want to make sure it's coming all the way through to the back. And in the back, it does attach actually. So I'll attach it in the back side here. Dynamesh again. H polish again. Move brush again.
And very quickly we're starting to get the pieces ready. The hands keep getting in my way, so I'm going to turn those off. Because right now I'm working on the belt. Therefore the belt is the only thing that matters. I really like climbing. Joined a climbing gym last year. Got to do it a whole bunch. Didn't keep going though. because I usually have a pretty short attention span and I want to try new things. So this year is all about diving. So I want to learn about uh, get scuba certified and snorkeling around. Also climbing is kind of a team sport. You need another person to go with you all the time to belay you. It's really hard to find people shared passions and interests all the time. Let's get shared schedules, I guess, is the hard part. Alright, so this will be just a bit higher in the back. There we go. Kwetabi is saying good research is done in person. Absolutely. All right, so there's the start of the belay loop. I'm going to next save the scene again. Kind of paranoid, I have to keep saving the scene. I'm going to use the insert primitives here to bring in a cylinder. And you know, technically this is for animation, so I should be thinking about it in terms of an animation character, but I want to print it first. So I'm likely going to use not the cylinder pipe, but just the cylinder closed. Bring that out here. Rotate it down. And split unmasked points so it's on its own layer. Duplicate it. Rotate it in place. That's not going to work. Move it up. Rotate it forward. And I'm basically just creating elements for me to be able to make this. Uh, belay loop the way I want. Go to Geometry Dynamesh. If you've ever seen a belay loop, the way they work, it's basically a harness to keep you uh, from falling. So it's a harness made out of basically lots and lots of little pieces that we're going to create simplified representations of. Something like that. This is supposed to be kind of a strap that connects to another strap that connects to another strap. But since I'm going to print this out eventually, I want to make sure that it is going to work. There we go. And if I make it too uh, thin, it won't. It will not print. Or it'll try and then fail. I want to make sure it's not too thin. There we go. There's the second part of the strap. I'm going to duplicate it.
rotate it into place, turn off my symmetry. If at any point I want to make sure that my mesh is symmetrical, I can go to Geometry, Modify, Topology, Mirror, and Weld. And that will make sure that it is symmetrical. Looks like something weird happened up here. Don't know when. But I'm going to want to fix that. So I'm going to go to Z Plugin, Subtool Master, Mirror. Over the X axis, append as a new subtool. That should fix that end. Delete this other one. Fuck, I just deleted the one I made. Delete that one. There we go. Now that's fixed, and I'm now I can do geometry, mirror, and weld, and it should fix this side. Yeah, better. Yeah, I wish ge uh, mirror and weld worked both directions. Do you guys know if that it does? There's a way to make it have work in both directions? Because I always need to mirror from left to right, and it only lets me mirror right to left. Okay, I'm going to inflate this a bit to make sure it's thick enough. Yeah, then you're saying in 2019 ZBrush they said that uh, mirror and weld should work for both sides. But I'm on 2019, I'm not sure if it does. Let's see. I'm going to clip curve here. If you uh, hold Alt and click, it should uh, nicely cut it for you or bend the clip. Now, should just be able to add the second part of the harness. Now this is supposed to be a little bit above the character's knees, so I'm going to need to move everything up a bit. Move that up. Come to this point, move this up. And we'll adjust as we need to. I might end up changing the proportions of the entire character anyway. Turn up the music a little bit. Okay, got my loop masked out, gonna extract again. And same trick as last time. Oh. First I'm gonna make sure that it's separate from my belay loop. <coughs> then I'm gonna come over here to the top So like the inside of this, and close them. This way when I Dynamesh, there won't be any more gaps. Now 128 resolution is a bit low, crank that a bit.
think there's another harness here from the back end to the back end. I need to look up some reference. For now, I should be able to rotate in place a simple cylinder. See if I can get it working. Make sure this looks comfortable. So I don't want anything to be too thin. And then I'll come in and H polish to flatten. That's a good question. Is this the Mass Effect soundtrack? <laughs> kind of sounded like it. Now this is a, a channel called Pretzel, or a service called Pretzel, which lets you play ambient music. So that previous song, I don't know if I have a way to see previous songs. I can skip to the next song, but I don't know if I see previous songs. It's kind of just a radio station. You can see all of the different types of channels. And it's all royalty free music, so pretty perfect for streaming. Alright, so almost done with these straps. Then we'll move on to the next part. Cool, thank you for doing a Google search Quetabi. Strav several types of strapping systems on the back. Yeah, so let's see what's going on in the back. And it will be a bit more accurate in our design. I'm liking it so far though. Save it. New style one. Let's see if we can do a quick Google search. Delay loop. All right, here we go. So there's basically just the one strap in the back like I had made it, but it's attached to something. Let's see what it's attached to. One strap in the back. Already did this kind of. Can make a better version of this. I actually have the loop there in the front. It's going to be hard to uh, print, but it'll look better for animation. This is a good uh, view of it, the whole setup. Yeah, so I'll keep this open along the side and then uh, 
make some more updates to this belay loop. But I don't want this whole uh, session to be about the belay loop. We can simplify a bit. Looks like these should be completely flat and large. To give a bit more support in the back. But that's why reference is so important for 3D artists. Never be afraid to do a Google search. Okay, I'm going to fix this. Split mass points. Go to geometry. Dynamesh close that. Dynamesh close this. Uh, I can inflate this area a bit. Reads better. Like an attachment point. So that Let's see, it's going to have this embed a bit better. Oh, get some proper left reference later. Extend this cube that I'm making, rotate it into place. Move it into place. This is how I build a lot of things for concept. Dynamesh it, and then I'll mirror and weld will be symmetrical again turn symmetry on then do something like this subtle but adds detail where it needs to be now this is supposed to be a loop which I'm afraid won't print if I have it showing as a loop. But what I can do is try to make it look more like a loop by just damn standarding along the side. Now it looks more like a loop, but hopefully we'll still be able to print. All right. Love when a plan comes together.
All right. It's a decent start to a belay loop. This will be a bit more safer to print. And I may end up actually, when I'm ready, attach this blur loop to the legs, just so there's no space in the front. We'll see when we get to that point. Alright, so that's looking pretty good for a belay loop for a start. I'm going to merge all those pieces together. Merge down, merge down. A bunch of times until I get all the belay pieces. There we go, there's all the belay pieces. I'll make sure they've got the same color on them. Auto groups, so we'll know they're still separate pieces we'll name it belay loop now one thing that's key for a belay loop is to have those straps along the side so you can put uh, you know hang different chalk bags or carabiners whatever you really need off the sides I'll insert cube Make sure I have a few of those. And use my clip curve brush a couple of times. Hmm, it's not going to work that way. This will complete the look of it. And it'll still be printable because there's not too much of a gap there. Oh, I know why it does that. Sometimes it'll uh, dynamesh weird if you're behind the spotlight at any point. Alright, cool. Got a strap there. This is what it should look like. Yeah. Heck with it, for now I'm just going to make it like it should look like. Alright, looking good. Now we can add our chalk bag and start working up the body. 
Let's go ahead and add the backpack. I think I've already made the backpack. Should just be able to turn it on. There we go. So there's one version of a backpack, which is side straps. And we might have a different version, which is cross strap, like the concept. So we'll see. We'll get back to that. All right, so here's the loop, the cube that I'm going to turn into my chalk bag. I stretch that cube until it's kind of looking like a pouch. Got to mesh that again. Now this doesn't really need to hang from this. In fact, this is probably just getting in the way right now. We do want it to feel like a pouch. Those of you that have seen chalk bags know how they usually work. Rickard87, have a good day, bro. You too. Thank you. Stretch the opening of this a bit wider. Here to hold down the center. Perfect. Feels like a chalk bag now. Needs a little, uh, strap. I can actually show you guys. I have one. Let's open up OBS. A bit larger. All right, so here's my chalk bag. Some good reference material because I own one. This one's by Arc'teryx. Of course it is. I'm into dinos. Here's a little uh, strap that uh, opens controls how wide this opens. So yeah, the one I made is more like a pouch. This one is like a pouch but with a self-contained. The one I keep uh, is my little fungusaurs in there. So I can take them out wherever I go and take photos really quickly. Yeah. But anyways, kind of have this as reference. And you notice that they've got this strap that they're attached to. And that's what it gets on, how it gets on. adjust the bag then based on my reference and keep sculpting away Osmosea is saying chalk bag for climbing. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It is a chalk bag for climbing. 
All right, this thing's getting in the way too much, so I'm gonna move it up like I had it before. Maybe pull it upward, outward, we'll see. Resize the cam, good point, thank you. See, that's why I need you guys <laughs> to help me resize the cam. <laughs> Keyboard Oreos and Osmose, thank you for letting me know that. You know what? I'll make the pouch just using the pouch and I'll turn this into kind of a strap along the side. I really love the clip brushes. They make uh, sculpting a lot faster and easier, especially for hard surface stuff. Uh-oh. What happened there? Yeah, I like clip brushes too, but I hate how it glitches out sometimes. Yeah, it's all about the direction you choose, because sometimes if you choose the wrong direction, it'll uh, just not work as you expect at all. Okay, I'm going to make that relatively large. can hear my dog barking there in the background. I have a little corgi, but he sounds like a very big dog, and he thinks he's a very big dog. some dimensionality to this chalk bag. The thing about sculpting in 3D is you've got to look at it from all angles. There we go. Got yeah, it feeling a lot more like a chalk bag now. Alright, we've been having a lot of fun just sculpting all these accessories, but I want to get back to the face and think about the style for this character.
Uh oh. Struggling there with a little bit of the controls. Hot keys. Just trying to create that uh, end of the chalk bag. There's like a string that sticks out. Okay, shock bag looking good. Ready, almost ready to move on. Just need to add the strap that connects it all the way to the rest of the belay loop. So we're gonna go here, maybe. Mm. No, best way to do this. Simply masking along the edge. Now I want to make sure I'm not symmetry. That should be perfect. So I'm doing a little polygrouping here based on the extract so that way I can select just the inside, mask it, and scale it in. Whoa, uh oh, looks like I masked two parts, didn't want to do that. That's what I wanted to do. This is kind of just a 3D printing trick where you mask the inside, pull it all the way inside the mesh. That way, that belt is always going to be deep inside the mesh. You don't have any gap between the belt and the pants. We can see if this adds anything. Climbers really have their own preferences as to how they tack this stuff on. This adds a little bit of asymmetry to the character as well, which is very important. So it feels more realistic. You can better suspend your disbelief on the animation side.
All right. Almost done with the strap there. Coolio. All right, done with all the accessories here. I'm gonna kind of merge them all down as part of the belay loop. That way we can kind of turn them all on and off. Perfect. So that was a fun little modeling, <laughs> concept modeling exercise, building that belay loop as quick as we could. Now let's get up to the face and up high. And I think in the next half hour we should be able to wrap it. Let's turn on the character's hands again. I want to try a different iteration of this backpack. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to make one which just has a sleeve along the center. So we'll leave the backpack just like that. Might square it out a bit more based on this new concept. There we go. It's feeling a lot more like a backpack. Pinch up along the edges to give it that ledge. Keeping it a very simplistic shape, but yet getting a lot done out of it. Press Shift-Z again by mistake to activate the spotlight. There we go. Now the mesh resolution is a bit high. Just lower that down so I can sculpt it a bit. All right, now let's add the strap we need. Looks like it's coming across her body this way, so I'll turn off symmetry, do the mass selection again. Make sure none of this is super thick. And then do an extract again. Subtool extract, accept that. Not like that. There's a better quality to it than the uh, double strap backpack, but we'll see. Might change it up still. I like keeping that strap pretty thin. letting it 
spread out a bit as it comes to the back. Okay, perfect. Couple more accessories to add, which we already have good starts for, and then just the face. Looking a bit lumpy overall here, so I'm going to spend a second to just fix that. You can avoid this lumpiness by staying lower poly for as long as you can. Adding a bit more asymmetry to the character here. Alright, I like that. Let's merge that with the backpack. If I can find it. Make the backpack a slightly different color for now. Alright, so we've got the backpack, we've got the belay loop, we've got updated shoes. Um, the feet look a bit long. Go ahead and adjust that. Okay, a bit better. Gonna reshape these to feel a bit more like climbing shoes. And we went back downwards. We have to head upwards. Alright, better. going to hint at a few more wrinkles. Being formed because of this strap. Along the top and the sides. And we'll come back to that. Only add wrinkles if they add something. Let's 
using the wrinkling here to define the pants. already feeling a lot better. Hi, I'm Azir on Twitch says she's really beautiful. Thank you. It is an indie concept. It's my own concept for a short film. All right, so let's add some pieces back on. So give her a bit more of a South Asian flavor. I'm gonna split that off. Let's see, this actually should maybe go under this strap. So let's see how that looks. Not bad. It does force it to uh, stay on the body, which is good. like that so she's got her dupatta or scarf there a bit asymmetrical as well so that's good and then make sure that there's enough space for it it's not interacting too much with the backpack and all Alright, perfect. Alright, so this is the hair we've got. And I think I'm going to lose the uh, headband for now. Let's keep it to simple hair. No, we'll see. Now in this concept, I've got the scarf wrapping around her head, which would happen probably this way, up and then around. Might be a bit hard to uh, work back into here, so I might just add a new one. Let's see. Got to insert primitives, cylinder pipe, add that, move it back, rotate around. You know what? Actually, I don't need to do that because I already have one that I built earlier. There you go. So that one has the top part I want. Okay, and where's the hair that we had? 
on earlier. That's gone. Crud. Make sure this hair is on its own layer. I'm going to simplify this sculpt a lot. I'm going to pick the best of both worlds. Not bad for a little less than two hours. Moving along pretty quickly. bit hard to think about how this strap is going to interfere with everything like the backpack it may be that I want it to go under everything it's kind of a pain to deal with otherwise but that's just the process you figure it out as you do it Pretty unique silhouette too. I don't think I've seen anything like this. Maybe the hood I've seen in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> So not bad looking with the pastel colors and Disney-esque face still, but I want to try a different style now. So I'm going to save this scene and say new style 2. Let's go to the face duplicate it and let's change it up
Make sure I keep the same color as I change it up. Let's go with that completely rounded face shape as we see in the concept. So we'll keep the eyebrows there. But let's see if we change up the eyes. Going through and filling object, coloring the materials. All right, let's go ahead and add a sphere for the nose. we we'll go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Mirror and Weld, just to make sure it's symmetrical. Let's add that nose in there. Split. Unmask points. We'll select half the nose. Let's move it in. Almost Pinocchio-esque. Divide that face a little bit. Hmm. Apologize. There we go. Looks like it's all part of the same topology. Yeah, I guess it is. Oh, there we go. Looking pretty unique. Let's go ahead and add some eyes, some details. Well, first thing I guess I should add a mouth. Let's add a very small mouth there at the bottom. Divide a bit more. I'm sure I have enough geometry to pull that off. All right. Clean and simple. Mesh is a bit messy. Let's 
just want to smooth it out. Add some war paint on her. By the same technique we've been making the clothes. A mesh extract. So sub tool extract, accept. Smooth the heck out of it. Turn off the mask and smooth the heck out of it just a bit more. Now let's move that in a bit. I'll pick a better skin color as I go. Yeah, need a little bit more, but that's fine. Let's come around here and add the eyes. So for the eyes, I think I'll use a couple of spheres again. Let's see, should I use a sphere or should I use a cube? I think the first thing I should do is save. Okay, back at it. Let's try inserting something. So I'll try insert. Let's try sphere. That's coming out too much, so I'm going to bury it in, make it white. And this way we have kind of bug eyes for the character and she can look around. I don't know, we'll see. I might end up using this or I might not. Split those off. Now, I've been stuck in this idea of Disney-esque eyes for so long, it's, it's good to just think outside the box a little. Something really appealing about simplistic eyes like this. I'm 
I don't know if I want an iris, but I did like when I was giving her the heterochromia look, so maybe. Still have a lot more playing around with color to do. But it is noon, so I think we're going to call it a day. A lot of practice and a lot of uh, work done on this. Basically, we've got the character almost completely fleshed out. We'll need to keep experimenting with the style to see what we like about it and what we don't. So there's the one head, there's the other. I'm going to switch back and forth. Disney-ish look, simplified, stylized look. I don't know, they both have uh, their merits. I do like this material finish for the skin a lot better. So I think I'll apply that to the head. MRGB, color fill object. Same thing on the arms. So, which look do you prefer? We'll see. I'll keep working on this and maybe have an even better look next time. Thanks again for joining everyone. Hope you enjoyed this stream. I'm going to start logging off now. So once again, just to repeat, um, my name is Eamon Akhtar. If you want to see more of my work, you can check it out online at Eamon3D.com. Uh, follow Fungusaurs on Fungusaurs.com. Big old dev, dev diary there. You can check out all my cute little creatures that I've been making. And follow us on Instagram at Fungusaurs, just on Instagram. If you want to see more streams and learn more about 3D printing, I have on Pixelogic.com, ZBrush Live, author Eamon Akhtar, a whole bunch of my previous streams. So you can check all of those out. And if you're interested in learning everything I know about 3D printing, you can go to Mold 3D Academy and search 3D printing for ZBrush artists. It's a self-paced class. For $200, you get eight weeks' worth of lessons. So you learn all about 3D printing, small, big, jewelry, miniatures, fashion, wearables, uh, everything you need, articulation, slicing, keying. So hope you guys tune in. And I'll be back next week and probably continue on this character or maybe a different one for the IP. All right, thanks for joining. See you all next time.